running a limited company. When running a limited company, you find money comes into something. This would be your business bank account. Your business bank account is really just a depository for you to get money in and then money through down to you here. That's the objective. As the money comes into the business, you'll find you have three different ways, very broadly speaking, to get that money out of the company. First is salary, which I'll come on to in a moment. Second is by way of expenses. <clears throat> and thirdly is by way of dividends or retained profit, again, which I'll come back on to. The objective here is to try and have high dividends, high expenses, and a low salary. That's the optimum strategy for running a limited company. Now, if we look at what the tax implications are here for tax and national insurance, let's just choose a hypothetical turnover for the moment of £100,000. When that money comes into the business, we need to work out how these segments come across into your company and to your own profile. So you'll have national insurance and tax. And there's several of these as we go through. So I'm going to paint the picture showing you entirely a salary, and then I'll bring all the other components across to try and show you how you can save money. So the first thing here, so let's do all of this as salary. Up to £12,500, you have no tax liability, and your national insurance is very modest. It's, it sort of kicks in about £9,000. And then as we go onwards beyond that, for taxation, you have the higher rate tax threshold, which is at £50,000 at the moment, and that is taxed at 20%, if this is salary income. As we go beyond that, you then find, as we get up to here, you're paying 40% tax. Now, in the event your turnover or your salary goes beyond £100,000, there's other implications which we can talk about in a separate um, meeting. National insurance. Um, as an employee, you pay two lots of national insurance through a company. The first one is employee national insurance, which kind of sits here between the 9000 through to the 50000 and that's payable at around about 12%. You also pay employer national insurance. This is employee national insurance, abbreviated EEE, and this is employer national insurance, and that's now running at 13.8%. If you're drawing all of your income and salary, what that then means is above your threshold, which is your personal tax allowance of 12,500, you will be paying anywhere between 45 and 55%. Now, one thing not a lot of people actually know is they think their national insurance stops as an employee when you hit the higher rate tax threshold. That isn't the case. You still pay national insurance beyond that, but it reduces down to 2%. So again, your cost implications are higher up here. What we would obviously want to do when running a company is try and bring in the most efficient way to run a business, but without doing anything that's gonna cause you any harm. There's no point doing something so tax aggressive that the revenue are gonna come along and knock on your door. So let's paint that picture. You could, for example, draw a salary down here at around about 9,000, 10,000 pound a year. Fantastic. No national insurance, no salary. However, are you contributing to the welfare state? Are you contributing to society? Probably not. And the reality here is HMRC will go hunting for people down here because they know there's potential to get tax off them. So we always recommend drawing a salary probably somewhere just a little bit up here depending on your business. If you are a small to medium sized enterprise, an SME, then there's a lot more flexibility in how you draw your salary. But again, let's, let's assume you drew a little bit more and went for the national living wage or the national minimum wage, which is about 15 and a half thousand pounds. But again, that's something we can talk about to work out how aggressive or passive you are with your strategy. As we go beyond that, obviously we want to try and bring across dividends, expenses, so we have dividends here, expenses here, and then your salary. I did what we want to try and do is try and suppress these lines down as much as we can, because it pushes your tax position down. Now this is where I just have to make a little bit of an assumption, so I will make up a few figures here just to hypothetically show you the impact of doing so. So let's bring expenses into the mix. Let's say you have 10,000 pounds of qualifying expenses, which we'll come on to later. What that would mean is your turnover, being the amount of money that you 
invoiced for or you brought into the company is reduced by £10,000. Now that is then taken out of the equation. So if you're looking at the savings, you would pay no national insurance on that £10,000, which is saving you around about £1,500 in national insurance. And depending on where you are in a tax position, whether you're at zero, you start to fill the pot up and go up to 100,000, you will save no less than 2,000 pounds in tax on those expenses. But that could be anywhere between two and 4,000 pounds in tax. So what we've covered so far, expenses and salary, which I'll broaden out in a moment. One thing we haven't covered is dividends. Dividends are taxed in a slightly different way um, than traditional salary. One thing that you do find is you don't suffer any national insurance on dividend income. So again, assuming we've taken £22,500 now and you've got the remainder as dividend income, you're probably going to save yourself around about £10,000 in additional national insurance. So it's pretty significant. But there are tax implications. Now, that getting too confusing because uh, HMRC do like to overcomplicate how to draw our money out. Dividend income, the first £2,000 you pay no tax on, which is great. So again, you have the benefit of saving there, which is probably about £400 in further tax. But then taxation is charged depending on where you are up and down this chart. So if it's down here below zero, then you naturally pay zero. As you get to the £12,500 threshold and beyond that, you add your £2,000 on, which is still at zero. So you're £14,500. Then it gets complicated. So between 14,500 and 50,000, in the current tax you pay 7.5% tax, but in 2022 and 2023 onwards, you pay 8.75%. And again, as we then go beyond the 50,000 threshold, you currently pay 32.5% on tax only, um, but in the next tax year it's gonna be 35%. So it is going up slightly higher, sorry, 34%, apologies. So there are some tax savings, there are some national insurance savings. But if we did nothing else, that's broadly your position compared to being a normal employee. As we start to move beyond that, let's expand on salary, expenses and dividend. So if we look at the salary, again, from normal employment, you'll be familiar with this, let's assume we have chosen a 15,000 pound salary, just for ease of calculation here. That's £1,250 gross, which is before taxation and national insurance, and that would probably be about £1,150 net. So you have a PAYE liability. A PAYE is just simply the amalgamation of your taxation and national insurance. So you would net from that around about £1,150 per month, in my example. As we then look at expenses, Again, I've made up a figure of £10,000 and we will elaborate on that in a further meeting. Let's again hypothetically play this one through. You have three distinctly different pots that you'll find within a limited company. The first one are pure company expenses. So that could be the cost of an accountant, the cost of professional insurance, um, the cost of buying a laptop. So let's assume in this example here, that's. £3,333, just a third of it for now. Then you've got pure company benefits. So that could be things like your company pension, your tax-free um, life assurance that you're allowed to put through the company, and many other things which, again, we can elaborate on. Again, let's just assume that's a third of the overall amount. Then you've got normal day-to-day -day reimbursed expenses. Now, reimbursed expenses are things that you as the director, the owner of the company, would have paid for out of your own pocket and then you want them reimbursed. That could be a train fare, a coffee, a lunch, and many other things. Again, let's just assume that's a third of the overall cost. Now as we then get into dividends, coming back to that and looking at the tax position to try and give you an indication of where we are. From our hundred thousand pounds hypothetical revenue we brought in, we're left we're left with seventy-five thousand. Obviously seventy-five at the ten thousand at 15 salary, it's 200,000 gross, of course. In the event you drew that as dividend income, you would probably find that your tax implications as you go through the band tier, you're probably gonna net around about 45,000 pounds 
of that money coming back out to you, with a tax cost in the region of about 30,000. If you would draw that as a bonus or as salary, which is the other way to do this, as I started by just saying, draw all the income as salary, then that, you would, that would probably net you to something in the order of about 35,000 pounds. So there's about a 10,000 pound difference by trading through a limited company versus trading as a normal employee and just taking it on the chip. Now obviously there's combined savings here, because if you then look at your um, monthly position, you'll find that you've got a number of things adding up into your overall monthly uh, income portfolio that you're getting from the business. The first is your net salary, which is the 1150. You've then got reimbursed expenses because you incurred those costs and you want to reclaim those back. So that's about another 300 pound. And then you've got this 45,000 that you're gonna draw. You can do this monthly, quarterly, half yearly, annually, or as I mentioned up here, retain this in the business. So there's a whole number of different combinations as to how we play with that. That's probably for the second meeting that we would go through. But again, that will come back to you. So you're looking at about 3,250 in further dividend income. So that's your total monthly income you're taking out of the company.